Hi. In this lecture, we'll be talking about saving the current value of a loop variable in functions nested in loops. Sounds more complicated than it really is. First of all, let's have a look at the following example. Here we have a function with another function nested in it. The nested function is defined using a lambda expression. What's important here is the value of the variable x, which is defined in the outer function. This value is remembered by the function which is returned from the outer function. Let's check it out. a equals 10 to power Now a references the object returned by the outer function, which is the inner function. We can now use the variable a as the inner function. Although the outer function has already exited, the value of the x variable defined in it is still retained in the inner function. So let's use the inner function with some arguments. For example, a with the argument of 2. Now, if a is this lambda function, then it should return x to the power of n. Well, x is out of scope now, but it is still remembered by the lambda function, and it's 10. So 10 to the power of n, 10 to the power of 2, should be 100. And so it is. And how about this? a with the argument of 3. This should be 10 to the power of 3, and so it is. Or a of 6, which is 1 million. As you can see, the function still raises 10 to the power specified in the argument. So the nested function remembers the value of a variable defined in the enclosing function even after it exits. This is known as closures or factory methods and is discussed in more detail in one of my videos, so feel free to watch it if you want. But now let's get to our actual topic of this video. The question is, what if a function is nested in a loop which is defined in the enclosing function? If we create a function in each iteration of the loop, will each function remember the current value of the loop variable? Let's check it out. Let's define a function with a loop and a nested function created with a lambda expression inside the loop. Fine, here is our function. The other function uses the for loop to create five functions which are appended to the adders list. And the adders list was created as an empty list over here and then returned by the other function. So let's call the other function now and assign the list of functions it returns to adds. Adds equals make adders enter. Now adds is a list of five functions. Let's see the first element in the list. Add zero. It's a function, as you can see. The other four elements are functions too. What do the functions do? They should add the number passed as an argument to the value of the current loop variable. So let's now use the function created in the first iteration of the loop, which is the first function, add zero. Let's call it with the argument of 10. So in the first iteration of the loop, the value of the loop variable was zero. So the first function should return the sum of 0 and 10. But does it? No. 14. Let's check the other four functions. Adds 1 of 10, 14. Adds 2 of 10, 14. Adds 3 of 10, 14. Adds 4 of 10, 14 again. Well, so it turns out it doesn't work. As you can see, they all return the same value. Only the last function returns what seems correct. 
In the last iteration, the value of the loop variable was 4. 4 plus 10 is 14. So this is okay. What about these? Looks like all the functions created inside the loop remember the same value of the loop variable num. It's the value from the last iteration. This is because the loop variable is looked up only when the created functions are later called, and then the value of the variable is the one from the last iteration. As we can see, with loops, closures don't work as expected. But how can we get around it? Well, we have to use default arguments. It means we have to pass the current value of the loop variable with a default. Defaults are evaluated when the functions are created and not when they are called. This way, each function will remember the current value of the loop variable. Here's how we can modify our code to make it work as expected. So here's our function. Let's copy it and paste over here. Now we can modify it like so. Lambda x, here we should use a default num equals num. Fine. And now it will remember the current value of the loop variable because this is assigned when the function is created, not only when it's called. Fine. Now let's create our list of functions again. Adds equals make adders fine and now let's use the first function adds this is the first function with the same argument of 10 so it should be 0 plus 10 which is 10 and so it is it works how about the second function adds 1 of 10 should be 11 is 11. How about the third function? Add 2 of 10 should be 12 is 12. And the next one should be 13 is 13. And the last one should be 14 is 14. So now it works. So loops are an exception where closures don't work that well, and we have to use defaults, at least for now. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.